What's up, what's up, what's up, what's up, what's up? Okay, I don't know how long that's gonna last. About 36 seconds. Okay, we're almost done. We're almost done. We're almost done. What's up, what's up, what's up, what's up? Welcome to another episode of the People's Paradise Podcast. I'm your boy, JT. I want to thank you so much for tuning in to your boy. Thank you so much for pressing the play button. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen to me. It's really cool. Uh, got a lot to talk about with you today. Uh, got a lot of things. We're going to get into the People's Playlist, of course. We're talking about the movies and shit that you probably should see and that you shouldn't see. We're going to talk about how I wasted $17 on a lift ride. We're going to talk about how I almost, how I almost got fired from my job on Sunday. And we always going to... And we're also going to talk about how, um, just purity, uh, stupid stuff, you know. But what's going on with you? Well, yeah, I'm kicking back. If you hear the audio quality, if you sense that the, the audio quality is really bad, it's probably because, like it was yesterday, I am recording this again in my cousin's house. Shout out to my cousin Tinky and them. Shout out to them and a security company. You know, we always keep in person. I'm in here recording it in their, um, I'm in here recording it in their, um, hold up. Fix the microphone. I'm in there recording it in their um in their studio place right now. So in there we were in their bedroom that their daughter used to live in. This ain't actually a professional studio. So shout out to them for letting me uh pursue my dream while they're using me for using me for cheap labor to move all their furniture. Shout out to them. Um Thank you by the way for listening to the episode I did with me and my two cousins. Shout out to David and Willie. Uh, fuck David, because David was too much of a B-word. He couldn't hang. Apparently, this nigga scared to get on the microphone, you know. I, I always tell him, you know, hey, you, this is, why are you being such a B? Why, why are you so scared? Why are you a cow? Why can't you get on the microphone and have a conversation? He was like, no, bro, I can't, because I'm, I don't do that, you feel me? I don't talk, I don't talk, I don't do talking shit. And I was like, man, you can talk. You know, but, you know, I'm talking shit about him because he's only about 10 feet away from me right now, so it's, it's pretty chill. But anyway, yeah, we're just kicking back. Uh, shit, where to start? I guess we can get into the people's playlist with uh, some of the movies I've watched and some of the shit I've seen. We'll start off right there. Um, first thing about the uh, people's playlist, I finally took the time to see that one movie that came out uh, the earlier half of this year called Gods of Egypt. My own, you know Gods of Egypt, but I talked to you with you, I talked with you about it a few episodes ago. I'm not gonna lie to you, it actually was it was a high movie. I mean. I won't say it was. I won't say it was good enough to have Gerard Butler be in a movie, but it actually was pretty good. And if you don't remember, there was a lot of controversy around the movie because a lot of people were saying that they should have had more black people in the movie. Which even now, I'm going to be all the way honest with you. I totally agree. I don't think you should have a movie about Egypt and you not have no niggas in the movie at all. They had no. Let me take that back. They had two or three niggas. They had one dude. Um, Shout out to this dude, Brosh Chakwick, something like that, some African looking dude. He played as a, he played as the Black Panther in Captain America Civil War. I was so mad to see this slave like nigga in this movie because he played the god of wisdom, right? And the first first off, for you to have a movie that's set in Africa and it's supposed to be about African gods, the first nigga that you see in the movie is kneeling up at these niggas with a box in his hand. He literally looks like he literally looks like like a slave from twelve years of slave. I'm like, what the hell? What? Like, and, but then I talked to my cousin, I was actually talking to my cousin about it a minute ago, and I told him, I think, because I know a lot of people responded to this podcast last time I did it, when I was talking about Black Panther, and I said about how much I hate Black Panther and how much I don't like it, I, me personally, I found out it's not that I don't like Black Panther that much, or Thoth and Gods of Egypt, I just don't like this nigga. Like, he did a really great job as James Brown. James Brown, he conveyed James Brown perfectly. He did a really great job as James Brown. I'll give him a hand clap for that. James Brown, he did excellent in it. Very, very great movie. But, like, in, in Gods of Egypt and Captain America Civil War, I don't think I don't think the characters that they gave him were the character to fit his character just naturally. Like, I feel like he was too rusty. Now, granted, in Gods of Egypt, I only saw him do a couple of things, so... I think in Gods of Egypt, they gave his character not enough time and not enough space to move around and be like a charismatic figure. And I guess that's my issue with most black characters is when I see you in a movie, I'm expecting you to be like that charismatic type nigga who's going to be doing this and going to be doing that. That's what I'm expecting you to be. So that's just my opinion. You know, hey, you know it is what it is. And um, overall, but overall, the movie was okay. You know, I do understand why they would want to have more black people in the movie because the movie is set in North Africa, Egypt. It ain't like... You would see a motherfucker who looked like Brad Pitt or, or God dang uh, Ryan Gosling coming out of Africa. I mean, out of Egypt, obviously. 
I don't know if they did that on. I did, like a lot of people were saying it was racism that they didn't cast any black people. I really just think that. I don't know. I mean, because that's happened before. You know, when they had the movie, the Cleopatra movie. There was a movie that was, that was a movie that was set in Egypt. The Cleopatra movie. That movie was set in Egypt. But the thing about that movie was that was made at a time when nobody really gave a fuck about black people in Hollywood or in the United States for that matter. At that time, when that movie came out, so that was a, that's kind of a bad example. I think now, since you have more people more woke about black history, I was just talking to my little um, Huey P. Newton bird, my little mini Huey P. Newton. <laughs> <laughs> U.P. Newton ass cousin in the living room about the um, about the Thirteenth Amendment of the Constitution. How when they ended slavery, they made it to where if you committed a crime, you could go back into slavery, which is kind of strange because that shows you that even when they ended slavery, the United States government still didn't perceive that slavery was a bad thing. They just thought it was like they really didn't perceive that it was a bad thing. You know, so I don't know. That just was interesting. But yeah, God's Adventure was pretty okay. Um, um, like I said, it was a pretty great movie. I enjoy. I I, I was okay. Like I said, I, I don't. I wouldn't have gotten. Now that I'm watching it, now that I watched it, I don't think I would have gotten that mad about the movie being mostly white people because sometimes, man, it's kind of like that movie they had Noah. The movie they had Noah two years ago about, of course, Noah and the Ark in the Bible. Which if you don't know about Noah and the Ark, um, to be honest with you, bro, just fucking Wikipedia, nigga. I don't know Wikipedia. But if you don't know about Noah and Ark, um, yeah, well, you know about Noah and Ark. I hope you do. But they were in the movie. They were mad because in the movie it was cast literally with nothing but white people. Like it was just all white people in Noah's Ark, and even the lead characters all were there. And they said that that was inaccurate. Why would you depict? You're supposed to be depicting one of the first civilizations in the world, be it even if it is from a biblical biblical standpoint, because their biblical history is kind of biblical history is kind of not all the way complete in that aspect, but. So they were saying, like, you know, it was kind of, they messed that up. My personal opinion, I thought, was I can see why they would get mad about Noah. with you when they were getting mad about there not being colored people in the Noah movie they were mad because they didn't see any niggas now if you want to be all the way considered about everybody in the world you should have had Chinese people Asian people I mean Chinese people Chinese people Korean people uh, Latin American people uh, people who look Aztec and all of that really they should have what they really should have did to be honest with you with Noah is they should have took a lot of different people who just look look like 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 take people who look just pure African, take people who look just pure Japanese, take people who look just pure Aztec, like take people like that. Because I would imagine that if, if, if Noah was a real story, if Noah came from a true standpoint in history, I promise you that was all, that was probably how they all look like. That's just my opinion. But it's kind of hard to cast all those different type of race. Hey, nigga, that ain't hard. Now I'm thinking about it, that ain't hard. Yeah, you know, that's, that's bad creativity on the director's standpoint. Forget the director on that. You know, he, he could have did a better job. So that's my opinion. So overall, my opinions, people's playlist, the first movie I talked about, Gods of Egypt, my opinion about that movie is, you should definitely go see it. I think you should definitely see it. I watch it on Netflix. And if you go on, one thing you'll learn about me is most of the movies I watch on here on Netflix. In fact, I'm about to hit the Twitter cycle and see what people were saying about Gods of Egypt. Let me see. See, Gods of Egypt, Twitter cycle. Oh. See, let's put in Gods of Egypt in the Twitter cycle. I'd rather go to the tour cycle just to see what people are really talking about. See, I love that Gerard. But shout out to Thomas Violence. He said, "I love that Gerard Butler is suppressing his Scottish accent so he can sound American while playing an Egyptian." <laughs> hold on, hold on. Shout out to Thomas Violence. He said, "I love that Gerard Butler is suppressing his Scottish accent so he can sound American while playing an Egyptian gods of Egypt." I didn't notice that. I, hold on, let me notice that. I'm going to respond with a video. Respond with a quick video. Hold on. Hold on right now. That, cause that, that actually was pretty funny. I never, I didn't think of I never thought about that. We're going to give him a quick response real quick. Hold on. Two. One, two, three. 
Hey, what's up, Thomas? This is JT from the People's Paradise Podcast. Uh, that was a funny analyzation. I just saw Gods of Egypt for the first time last night. I didn't think about that because I don't. I never look at Gerard Butler and think that he's Scottish. I, when I was watching, I just my whole thing was I was wondering why most of the actors outside of Gerard Butler were trying to have a British accent in Africa. Like to me, that just sounded weird. There, yeah, just send it to him right. Just send it to him right now. Recording live. Recording live. Yeah, I, I didn't notice that. <laughs> That'd be a trip when you see somebody on TV who's like an actor from like a different country. Oh, what's up? It'd be different. That'd be one of the craziest things. Like when you see an actor on TV who's like from a hell of a different country. Like, shout out to that one dude, Idris Elba. Um, you have Idris Elba who's from Britain. But I didn't know he was from Britain until like... I didn't know he was from Britain until like hella long until like hella long in his career. Hella long into his career. Like the first time I saw Idris Elba was when he played Stringer on the Wire. And it shocked me for the it shocked the hell out of me when I watched the movie. I think it was the Oscars, it might have been the Golden uh, Golden Nominee, something like that. But it was at some award show where he was walking on there and this lady walked up and interview like interviewed him and was like, Hey Idris, how are you doing today? You are going to receive the the such and such and such. How are you doing? And he said, Well child, you know, I I I um I feel it I feel it's a very I feel it's a very good thing to for for the country of Britain that I am here representing my country. I was like, Nigga, what your country? What? Nigga, what? Nigga threw me off totally. So, you know, hey, sometimes you got niggas like that. It'd be crazy. I, more of the stories, I didn't, I never noticed that. So that's Thomas Violence for making that inter- interesting analyzation. Uh, let's see what else we got. All this, let's give this to, I really hope, um, oh, shout out to a little, little bit behind the beat. All of this, let's give this the gods of Egypt treatment. I really hope G-I-T-S, Ghost in the Shell, tanks of the box office. You know what? I'm going to respond a little bit. Okay, so... The tweet, the pe- person who I'm reading right now is a little bit behind the beat, and what she's talking about is she said all she's talking about Ghost in the Shell because Ghost in the Shell has a white lead character, and if you don't know about Ghost in the Shell, then you really should get off of this podcast because that's an anime cartoon with like was one of the best in my life as a kid. So trust me, just fuck with it. But um, yeah, shout out to shout out to them. Um, Ghost in the Shell for one thing. Let me get let me quick. God, I'm getting sidetracked. Okay, first off, Ghost in the Shell. Ghost in the Shell, you should definitely see that movie. I'm going to go see it. It has a lead character who's white, even though the show is set in uh, in modern-day Japan. I personally believe, I like the lead actress. Her name's Scarlett Johansson. She's a very great actress. You know who she is, pretty woman. I believe it. I'm a personal fan. So I think she can do a good job. And I think she's going to do a good job. And I, it's, I think she can do a good job, and I think she can do a good job, and I believe in her. So I'm gonna go to watch. I'm gonna go watch it. Now, what I am gonna do is I'm gonna respond to this young lady a little bit behind the beat and tell her something. Hold on, real quick. I'm gonna tell her, give her, give her a response like I gave the other guy, and see what she says. Hope she don't. Hope she don't curse me out. Mm. One to three. One to three. Hey, a little bit behind the beat. This is JT from the People's Paradise Podcast. I'm recording live. I read your tweet about Gods of Egypt to give Ghost in the Shell the Gods of Egypt treatment. I'll be real with you because I was critical about Gods of Egypt at first. I watched the movie. I actually thought it was a pretty odd movie, Gods of Egypt. Now, I do think they should have had some more black characters in it. I feel like they should have had that, of course. But I think we should have still given it a chance because I know there's a lot of movies that, in black culture, not black culture, but... In Black Hollywood, we make a lot of movies. We take a lot of movies and we redo them in with through the perspective of being black. Like how they had that one movie, Chirac. If I'm not mistaken, I believe Chirac, the movie the Spike Lee film, was based off of some old Greek play. So, you know, that's what it is. What do you think? Cool. Okay. And yeah, we're going to send it to her right now. Hey, if you want to tweet me and get a response, let me know. I want to hear what you think. I want to hear what you got to say. Hmm. Got two tweets going at the same time. Okay, I got to wait for those to load and go away before I can send up any more. Send any more, but I got to wait for those two tweets that I just sent to load because I, I, like I said, I recorded it with video, so it's gonna take a while. But anyway, um. What was I going to say? Something I was going to say. I had it in my mind.
that you might enjoy if you haven't seen it yet. It's on Netflix right now, so take the time to tune in. Um, another movie that I watched on Netflix with my cousin was Perfect Host. This movie was this movie was the definition of crazy beyond beyond explanation. This movie was crazy as hell. To basically sum up the sum up to sum up the movie for you, there's this guy. He commits a bank robbery. He escapes after the robbery. The robbery goes back. Goes um goes left. It doesn't go well. He commits the bank robbery with his girlfriend. The girlfriend gets away. He gets away. Um he ends up. He ends up doing this shit where, like, he was going to different neighbors' house, pretending that he was somebody else, so he could try to get in their house and, and relax for a minute while the cops looked at, looked for him. He ended up doing it to this guy, who happens to be just crazy as fuck. Ends up he, the guy tells him that he's throwing a dinner party. It turns out that the guy's throwing a dinner party for him, but really ain't nobody fucking coming. This guy imagines that there's people coming to the dinner party. He's a he's a psychopath. He's a, a schizophrenic. I ain't gonna spoil the whole movie for you, but in my opinion, it's it, it's it's worth checking out. Like it's worth checking out. I would check out the movie. I'm not gonna lie to you. I, I checked it out. I was surprisingly entertained. I'm not gonna lie to you. I was really entertained about the movie. I thought I thought it was gonna suck ass, but yeah, they actually did a pretty good job. Some of these movies be good. Like some of these movies with these dumbass plots be hella good. I mean, I'm like, even with God's, like, even with, well, not God's feature, but I'm thinking, what's a movie with a dumb, I'm gonna ask you that, what's a movie with a dumbass plot that actually was a good movie? Think about that, I'm trying to think of some good, like, ones like that, what were some, what were some good-ass movies with dumb, what were some good-ass movies with dumb plots? I'm trying to think of some good, let me think. Good-ass movies with dumb plots. Good-ass movies with dumb plots, I'm trying to think of anything. I'm trying to think. God, that's always a dumb plot. I can't think of any. I think Powder. You remember that movie Powder? Came out like in 1995 or 94 or something like that. It was that movie about that really, 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 really pale, pale kid. It was a movie about that really, really pale kid who um he had the power to like control lightning or some shit like that. It's like you should look at it. It might be on Netflix. So. Powder, and it was about this guy. He had the power to control lightning. His body was like a conduit. It was like a, light, a conduit for lightning and for um, electricity. And like he, he was. It was showing like how it was hard for him going through his regular day to day life, living and stuff like that. You know, you know how it is for these freaks. They get, they get no, they get no, they get no exempt. I hope I'm being a perfect ghost. Well, that's one thing about podcasting and being a speaker that I love is your talent is really defined um, on how what makes your talent is really defined on what makes your personality unique. You know, like there's a lot of people who are like a hella good podcast and hella good bloggers way better. Than I say my shit's a little bit more loud, obnoxious, annoying to some extent, but you know, hey, that's just my style. That's just my style. Okay, it's back to normal now. There we go. Okay, we cool. We cool. We cool. Oh, somebody just pulled up. Like, drive. Wait, who did just pull up? Oh, that man. Okay, but anyway, yeah. That's what's going on right there. That's a good one. Um, People's Politic. I'm going to get into that section. Ben Carson. We found that Ben Carson... Oh, yeah, People's Politic on Twitter. We're talking about this. Ben Carson said... That he does not want to be in Donald Trump's cabinet. I'm not going to really stay on that that long because I don't think nobody was really checking for Ben Carson at all. I don't even think anybody really gives a fuck about Ben Carson. I don't even think Ben Carson's own family gives a fuck about Ben Carson. I don't even think. My, the funny thing about Ben Carson is, I'll never forget this, is when um Donald Trump went with him to Detroit. They tried to do this thing where they pulled up in Detroit because when Donald Trump was still marketing a campaign prior to him being elected um, the new dictator of the United States of America, he went with he went with Ben Carson to Detroit. This nigga pulled up with four or five limos at Ben Carson's old ghetto. Like, Ben Carson really got respect like that. Like, nigga, I'm like, then Donald Trump went and got fucking, um, who else he got? It was that, who else he got with him to uh, campaign with him? It was that one... Not campaign for him to go sign with him. Was that nappy headed ass Don Cornelius? Not Don Cornelius. Don King. That nappy nappy headed nigga. Why the hell would you get? 
Why would you even? Why would you even? Why would you get Don Cornelius? Like, first off, don't nobody my age even know who Don Cornelius is. I've never been sitting in my room, going through my cheats and thinking, wondering, nigga, what the fuck, nigga, nigga, what the, man, what the hell? Oh, shout out to uh, Thomas Violence. He just responded to me right now. He said, "Mate, you're not wrong. It was weird as hell." Yeah, that's what I was saying. Like, you never, like, sometimes you really never know. You never really never know. You really never know. Like, it's just kind of strange. Um, you know what? Hold up. I gotta go. Actually, um, shoot, 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 shoot. I gotta go get the password for this computer because the Wi-Fi, my Wi-Fi ain't working. We're gonna have a, we're gonna have a short intermission. We're gonna be right back. Um, I'm gonna play for you a little. A little gonna play for you a little bossa nova. Real quick, just so I can, just so you can kind of keep busy. Sounds good. No, no, sound good. Hold on, just real quick. Oh, real quick. Okay, we don't have the boss enough. Okay, we're just gonna do the cheering crowd thing right now, then. Until I come back. Shout out to the people listening. We're back again. And we're back again. Whew. Whew. All right, we're back. They didn't want me to come back, but I'm back. Back back like a blackjack evil evil roams the world <laughs> okay we're back again and I got the Wi-Fi password so now I think it'll be easy for me to tweet people now cool cool so anyway shit I'm still moving slow god dang it oh well so Ben cars oh well you know now that I got my that I got the Twitter cycle open let's go to the Twitter cycle era Let's see what's going on in the Twitter cycle. I'm curious to see what anybody, everybody's talking about. Let's see. Uh, my Twitter cycle says Tony Romo. Okay, I don't care about Tony Romo. EP 2016. I don't know what that means. Ted, IBM. Ted, all oh, those Ted talk things. Uh, I don't like those. Um, Natalie Portman greets in the new Jackie trailer. Jackie trailer. Oh, Natalie Portman. You know what? Uh, if you don't know Nat Natalie Portman, she's actually going to play Jackie Kennedy in this new in this new biopic talking about Jackie Kennedy's life as the wife of JFK. At first, I didn't give a damn, but just because it's Natalie Portman, I'm going to show support. I'm going to go see the movie just because <sighs> just because it's my baby and I feel like I got to support her. You know, there might come a time where she might divorce her multi-million dollar husband and I might just be on the side waiting and I don't know why. <laughs> Coming there and I got it! 
Because that's what I am. I'm an eagle. It is life. Anyway, rest the whole nearly said that's the whole Hey, nothing good happening on. God damn. Super Mario Run is on the way, but it'll cost you. They're making a Super Mario Run. Nintendo has announced that its first mobile Mario game will be released on, the, on December 15th in more than 100 countries. It'll be free to try out, but you'll need to play a one-off fee to get full access to the game. Okay, you know what? Listen, let me tell you. Super Mario is about 36 or 37 years old. I don't think anybody really gives a damn about Super Mario Brothers. I don't think anybody was checking for a Super Mario video game right now. Now, what you need to do is bring back Sonic. Because Sonic was the stuff. Sonic was like one of the best game games you could ever play in your life. Love Sonic. Okay, we'll go use this. <laughs> Jesus and Mero explain the problem with post-election safety pins. The Vice Land late night host explained their thoughts on people wearing safety pins to show marginalized groups that they're safe in the presence of pin wearers. Well, let me read that again because I don't I don't understand that. The Vice Land late night host explained their thoughts on people wearing safety pins to show marginalized groups that they're safe in the presence of the pin wearers and how the act is more performative than help. Let me play the this. Safety pins, like yo, I'm not with them. So did you hear about the safety pin thing? What's Dude oh, Internet here is so slow. I literally might as well just use my own hand. Hold on. I'm trying to play because I want to hear what he's talking about. I'm curious, like what the hell does that mean? Safety pins. Okay, so okay, I'm a um, I don't really understand what they were saying. I think they were saying it was kind of pointless to vote for Trump, and then wear a safety pad and saying like, you know, I still support. I, I'm not a racist or I'm not an asshole because I'm a Trump supporter or something like that. Um, I kind of get what they're saying to an extent, but at the same time, I'm kind of like, like, I'm kind of like. I mean, to be honest with you, if you're going to wear, I, I, I can't really speak intelligently on it because I don't understand what they really said in clear. Listen, don't get your activism tips from BuzzFeed. That's it. That's the whole list. Okay, yeah, we're going to pass. I don't understand what that's about. Bernie Sanders swings by the late the late show and talks the election. Man, shout out to Bernie Sanders, man. I wish Bernie would have won. Hillary Clinton ended up with two million more votes than Donald Trump. So don't, you know, so don't see this... As a gas, as you know, a, a, a massive success for Trump. He lost the popular. End of all, he comes into the White House as the least popular candidate in the history of his. Hillary Clinton ended up with two million more votes than Donald Trump. So don't. You know, so don't That's she won the popular vote, she just didn't win the electoral you know, vote. A, a, a massive success mm -hmm. for Trump. He yeah. lost the popular vote. Second of all, he comes into the White House as the least popular candidate in the history of his. Yeah, history, that's true. 
<laughs> that nigga is the least popular candidate in the history of this election, so. See if I can, I'm gonna see if I can respond to that. Find out tweets if I can respond to it. I mean, truthfully, I'm gonna retweet that. I'm gonna give a video. I think you said I can find it. Where is that, man? Then that a video? Let's see. I mean, theoretically, it is true. He did come in here with the least popular vote. I don't think I don't think he's the most least popular out of the out of the history of presidents who have ran for presidency. I think what it is is he's the most controversial because regardless of what you say, you know, even if you say Hillary Clinton had two million more popular votes than him, regardless, nigga, it was a really, 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 really big portion of the United States that was really supporting this nigga. Like it wasn't like it was just two or three niggas in the, in the back of the class. It was like at least at least a good sixty five percent of the classroom. If the if the United States was a classroom. Right way, the night the United States was a classroom, I feel like the people who support for Hillary Clinton were like those kids who got on punishment and was made to sit in the corner with the dunce caps on their heads. Like, it, we was a really small minority. I'm joking, but all says it was probably it's probably half an hour. So, uh, you know, but I fuck with Bernie Sanders, man. I, I really wish Bernie Sanders would have won. Um, my whole thing, my whole thing was like I said, I. Well, when I said on this podcast before, I told you and I told I told Willie yesterday when I was talking to him. The reason why I was so mad at Democratic supporters, black people, is if you were going to wait all the way to the end of the election to figure out you didn't support her Lee and don't like her and don't want to vote, then nigga, why didn't you show up at the Democratic nomination three months ago and vote for Bernie? I've never voted before in my life up until the Democratic nomination. And I wouldn't have voted for Bernie because I fuck with him. I support him. It's so sad that we got to a point to where the two people who were vying for presidency of the United States were two people who had significant, had significant, who in significant numbers were unliked in the general public of the United, in the general public. Like, that's just weird to me. Like, uh, this is kind of crazy. Like, that's what we're getting to. I would tell you, nigga, the next election we have, I don't even care about Donald Trump anymore. The next election that we have, that, that next election is going to be lit. We probably gonna elect. I don't know who we elect the next next uh, next time. Truthfully, I hope we elect Oprah. Like, if we elect Oprah, that'd be good. I would vote for Oprah because I know Oprah cares about people. Oprah would give us free college. I know she would. I believe in Oprah. I know she would. Oh, well, this is a bit of a news in the Twitter cycle. People named The Rock the sexiest man alive. Magazine just announced at the news that the Dwayne The Rock Johnson, a former WWE champion, the current highest paid movie star, is 2016 Sexiest Man Alive. I mean, okay, I mean, you know. <laughs> shout out to Steve Helling. Uh, shout out to Steve Helling on Twitter. He tweeted out, as the resident bald guy at People, I fully support the decision to name at The Rock as our Sexiest Man Alive. It's a victory for all of us. <laughs> and shout out to The Rock He said We did it brother A small step for man A giant leap for bald manliness Worldwide Sexy man is alive If you listen to this podcast If you listen to this podcast right now I want to ask you Especially if you're a woman Is a man being bald sexy? Because to me I think it looks weird To me I, I feel like I feel like even on The Rock It looks like a, a goddamn milk white uh, Milk dud But I, some dudes think they look good in that style, or then some guys don't have a choice because you start balding and shit. And you don't want to look like, you don't want to look like somebody, <laughs> somebody ripped out the middle of your head and forgot to take the rest. <laughs> Andrea, shout out to Andrea. She tweeted out, "Yes, yes, definitely a perfect choice this year." Let me go to her right now. See what she tweeted out. Seriously, go to that. I want to go to that tweet. I want to go exactly to that tweet. We're just saying. Yeah, shout out to Andrew. She said, I'm going to tweet it right now. I'm going to tweet it right now. Tweet it right now. And I'm going to say, I'm going to ask her the question I just asked you. We're going to see what she has to say. Right now. One, two, three. One, two, three. Hey, Andrea, my name is JT from the People's Paradise Podcast. I was reading the tweet you said about The Rock as him being a good choice. I want to ask you, because we're talking about this in the podcast right now. Is it sexy generally? Generally, Is it sexy generally, generally for a man to have a bald head? I'm just curious. Cool. Because me personally, I was like, it's, I don't know, I mean, to me it looks kind of, it, it depends on the guy. It depends, if it also depends if you have the head for it. Like that one guy, um, Michael, Mike Coulter from Luke Cage, 
he's in the perfect position to have a bald head because he actually has the head shape for it. Like me, I ain't got the head shape for it. Like if my my head is shaped like a 1976 Cadillac DeVille, like I can't be walking around with all this shit. So when it plus my hill, my head got hills and valleys in it. It got dents. I don't, I ain't like, I don't like that. That's why, like, if I have a, that's why I'm always debating with my mom about that because she always wants me to get a low cut, get a low cut, get a low cut, get a low cut, get a low cut. And my thing I always tell her was like, Mama, I don't, Mama, I don't look, I don't know what you, how you think in your head I look. With, I don't know how you think I look in my head. I don't know how in your head you think I look with ball with a ball fade, but then in real life. It does not look cool. I look like a like a prisoner in San Quentin. Like no, it's 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 not sexy, nigga. Trust me, it's not. It ain't a good look. But then yeah, so I guess it's just all opinion. I think it, then, then again, it all depends on what you like. Because there's some women, for example, like I remember when dreads first came out, and dreads were really in style. Even now they're still in style. You had a lot of girls who looked at guys with dreads and thought they were thought they were sexy. Like oh my god, loving tall nigga with dreads and tats and shit. I'm like, yeah, really. Oh, okay, Bruno Mars is announcing a world tour. Which, by the way, shout out to Bruno Mars. He got a song that came out called Versace on the Floor. I was just listening to it with my cousin yesterday. It actually was a pretty cute little song. I don't want to. I don't. The reason I ain't gonna play it for you right now was because I got copyright infringement or some shit like that for playing. Um, remember, I think it was last Tuesday. I was talking with you, and I played that one song by Joe Wendell Getter, shout out called uh, Chinese Truth. I got played that song and I got like a copyright infringement. I'm like, nigga, for what? I only played 15 seconds of it. Like, and not, not only that, the song was in Portuguese, so it ain't like nigga, it ain't like it is doing any harm in my country. Had an album ain't even available in this country, so it ain't like I was doing that much harm. Niggas, whatever. I don't know. It's just my life, you know. You know, pigs fly. It's whatever. It's whatever. It's we real niggas out here, bro. Um, let's see. What else we got? What we got? What's going on? Let's talk about this. Oh, Lady Gaga pins an essay on womanhood. I did not see that coming. Was not looking for that. I mean, I'm pretty sure she can write to tell him. The singer has pinned an essay in the upcoming edition of Harper's Bazaar about what it means to be a woman in the modern, modern world. I mean, it's kind of uh, kind of strange to receive an opinion from Lady Gaga on what it is to be a modern woman, to be a one being a woman in the modern world because... She's not necessarily a modern woman. Like she's not your your stereotypical American woman, and I like that about her. I'm not knocking her because I like that about her. I love I love her sense of identity, and I love how comfortable she is with being her true self. You know, I had to fight with that a lot as a time as a kid was. I never felt comfortable with being my true self, but then I saw Brokeback Mountain, and <laughs> I'm stupid, joking. I'm joking. Yeah, I'm quoting something she wrote right now. I turned 30 this year and I'm a fully formed woman and I have a clear perspective on what I want. See, I thought she was older than that. I didn't even know. Adrian Benedict, Adrian, I, I'm an Italian Catholic and I grew up with a lot of guilt. Let's have faith. Either. Okay, hold up. I got it. Okay, hold up. I'm, I, I, can't, I can't say that's funny. We'll see. Robert, shout out the hostile Robert who tweeted, fame is the best drug that's ever existed. Once you realize who you are and what you care about, that need that need for more just goes away. Oh, she was quoting Gaga. I respect that. Lady Gaga, I'm looking at these pictures at her. Look, looking at these pictures of her right now. Without the eye, she looked in a lot of ways like Scarlett Johansson. Like in a lot of ways, she just kind of looked like her. Marvel announces Inhuman TV. I don't care about that. Carrie Fisher admits affair with Harrison Ford during filming of Carrie F during filming of Star Wars. Nah, I can't care about nobody cares about that. Ryan Reynolds, Usain Bolt, and Warren Betty. Warren beat Wal whatever whatever how whatever how you say B E A T T Y in English are GQ's two thousand sixteen men of the year. What else Warren Beatty? Okay, I can understand. Ryan Reynolds definitely deserves that for how good of a role he did in my movie. <laughs> Ryan Reynolds definitely deserves that for how good of a role he did in my movie called Deadpool. I can put it down to Deadpool. I loved that film. And you saying Bolt definitely deserves it for being one of the most accomplished athletes in the world. <laughs> mm. That was a nigga did his best. And <laughs> the Simpsons never expected to be right. 
A year 2000 episodes, The Simpsons correctly predicted that Donald Trump would one day hold the United States' highest office. In a post-election episode, the show gave a small nod to its foretelling. Latest Simpsons episode. <laughs> First, okay, so you ever seen The Simpsons, right? Okay, when you watch The Simpsons, you know how the intro goes to like in the city and it goes inside the school and Bart's inside a classroom and for punishment he's writing like a sentence over and over again on the chalkboard. And um, the last set, the last Simpsons episode that they had premiere on Sunday, they had this time for the intro they had Bart writing "Being Right Sucks" on the chalkboard. <laughs> that is funny. I mean, I think it's right. He's just right. He's got it right. That's kind of scary. <laughs> I don't know who Al Jean is. I can't, can't read that. Go. Is Lisa Simpson preparing to run in 2020? That actually would be cool. I mean, you know, it is what it is. I mean, hey. Oh, Jackie Chan is now an Oscar winner. Hold on. After five decades in the film industry and making more than 200 films, the actor and martial arts star received an honorary Oscar from the acting branch of the Academy during during the Saturday's annual Governor's Award in Hollywood. Ive Jackie Jen received his honorary Oscar at Late Night's Governor Awards. Chris Tucker presents honorary Oscar to his Rush Hour co-star. It was an honor working with you. You made a lot of people rich. You made a lot of people rich. It made a lot of people rich. I mean, you know, he was a, he was a great actor. I mean, that's kind of random. That's kind of random to pre present him with an honor. I don't mind thing about me is I hate participation awards. You know, the Oscars keep him. I don't know if I'm. Maybe I got it wrong or not. I mean, nigga, the Oscars was six or seven months ago, so I don't like the idea of receiving participation awards. Either you deserve the award, you deserve it or not. I don't know why you would give him an award in November, but maybe I'm reading this wrong. Maybe I'm reading something wrong. I don't know. Okay, this was a Saturday's annual Governor's Award in Hollywood. Okay, that still sounds like a participation ceremony. Like I don't like it like that. Like you're gonna win the award, you're gonna win the Grammy. I win the Grammy at the original Grammys. Like you're gonna win the particip, don't win the participation award Grammy. That that shit is that's not that's not the real that's not the real winner. That's not the real winner. He did not earn that. I know. Yeah, girl. People couldn't get enough of Dave Chappelle's return to TV. Well, yeah, okay, we're pretty much done with the entertainment news. See what's going on in the news. Democrats push back on Trump's appointment of Steve Bannon. Oh, somebody's here. Hold on, let me see. I don't hear yelling, so I'm assuming I'm okay. Okay, cool. So yeah, they push back on that. Um, in War 17, are important rats like being tickled. Science says so. I mean, you don't need science, nigga. Everybody likes being tickled. What animal doesn't like being tickled? Why is this news? Like, why is it news that a rat doesn't that a rat likes to be tickled? I'm like, I'm watching the video of it right now, and it looks like the rat doesn't like. It. It's so cute, though. Oh my god, it's so cute. Oh my god, it's so cute. Oh, okay, yeah. Okay, that is kind of funny. That's cute. That's cute. Brain scans of rats reveal that they have to be in the right mood to go enjoy getting tickled, just like humans. Yeah, that's true, because I'm about to go hop on my cousin and tickle him. I know he's going to have to throw up a bitch fit. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, right, here we go. Ben Carson doesn't want to roll him. The formal... The former neurosurgeon and presidential candidate was floated as a possibility to have the United, United States Department of Education, but he's pulled himself from consideration due to his lack of experience, according to this book. I mean, first of all, why does Ben Carson look blind in every photo that you see? If you ever look at any photo of Ben Carson, he looks so fucking blind. Like, I would never take him seriously. He looks blind. He just looks dumb. Like, 
Anytime you have somebody who's a black politician in the public eye and not any black, no, not no black people want to support this nigga, then there's something that you should pay attention to about him. Because we'll generally support you if we feel you're credible. That's what, like, I was talking to my cousin. We were talking about that yesterday about how, like, you have certain black politician leaders who try to become the president or try to become a governor. And they, when they do have a lot of support from the people, they just feel, a lot of people will feel that black people are only supporting it just because they're black. Let me tell you something. I ain't never supported Al Sharpton when he ran for president. I wasn't alive to support Jesse Jackson. I, I, I imagine that I wouldn't have. Um, I wouldn't have supported. Hell, I, I wouldn't have even supported Malcolm X had he made it. I love Louis Farrakhan, but I don't think I would have supported Louis Farrakhan if he would have ran for president. First off, Louis Farrakhan. <laughs> first off, Louis Farrakhan. Oh, he got too much BS on his plate to ever. If you don't know who Louis Farrakhan is, he's the leader of um, a very famous group called the Nation of Islam. It's the latest black group here in the uh, United States for black Muslims. I know for sure he definitely ain't running for president. He was the dude who had the Million Man March earlier this year. I hope you, I hope you, you probably were the Million Man March. Million Man March was pretty, was lit. So, yeah, you know, it was cool. But with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and cut the podcast off. I got to go ahead and, um, I'm thinking about doing another episode of the Pagoji podcast. I'm thinking about it, but I did, if, if you don't know what the Pagoji podcast is, it's this podcast that I was doing. About, you know, by Gorgie and Sama Music. I thought it uh, was C talking about that. I'm thinking about going back to that. I might go ahead and start doing that over again. Or not. No, no. I'll think about it. But with that being said, um, thank you for listening to the podcast right now. Thank you for tuning in to your board. Thank you for being part of the family that is the People's Paradise. Thank you for riding the bus over the hill to the moon top. And we're going to win it. Yeah. Football games. This microphone. This microphone could take all of that. I wonder how loud I can get. Let me see how loud I can get in the microphone. It's been a long. That's one thing I love about podcasts. You can just take the time to just yell and have fun. I know the thing is the world. Yeah. With that being said, my name is JT. Thank you for listening to the People's Paradise Podcast. I'll be back here tomorrow, one p.m. Pacific time. Thank you. For